Welcome back everybody. It's a beautiful spring day here. The sun finally has some warmth in it. I've decided to get back on this project. It is uh, Saturday here and getting a little bit done this morning. Um, I recut the gasket for this cover because I wasn't happy with how the first one turned out. So I made up a new one. That's all done. Um, right now I'm working on uh, putting the seal in this rear cover for where that main shaft comes through. Uh, I ended up using that, that rope packing that we talked about in a previous video. Uh, I put it in there um, and, I, and I put the joint on the top at a 45 degree lapped seam to make it as oil tight as possible and then I initially worked it in there with a uh, just a punch you know a smooth surface to get it started in there and then what I actually what I ended up doing to work it in the rest of the way is I just took one of these old uh, sockets that you know a little bit tapered and just kind of started with a little bit smaller socket got that fit in there and then i worked my way up to the next size socket which is approximately the size of the shaft and I just kind of kept working that in there and, and and pushing that seal in tight until i feel that that shaft could go in there now i'm about ready to put a little grease on the end of that and slip it in there and see how it fits uh, one second well, I dry fitted it and I was not happy with how it was going together. A little finger full of grease and everything, I had it on there. And then I discovered this is the top here. My seal isn't quite even. There's more seal on the bottom than there is on the top. And it might have been fine and it might have all been, I could have probably forced it all together. But because this. Uh, shoulder pilots into around the bearing uh, surface here because it was off center and it didn't want to go together nicely I just wasn't quite happy with it so I think I'm going to take this seal out and try it again take a new chunk see if I can get it to come out a little bit more even so everything goes together nice and straight and square like it should so I'll check back and I get that figured out. There, third time's the charm. So on the second attempt, I got the a little bit too short, so it didn't quite meet at the top like nicely. So a third time, um, got it on there now, and I'm pretty happy with how it. I got three bolts in just to, so that plate is in there tight. This is located where it should be. I can still. Move that shaft freely. It's got a little bit of drag on that seal, so I know it should be sealing up well, but it's not binding in any way. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. So um, I guess the next step would be to take this and this assembly back off as one. Uh, make sure I put a little oil on that bearing. Um, Clean up all the surfaces, meeting surfaces here to here well, and all the bolts well again. And I think I can put some some Permatex on there and seal that all up. Good for for good now. I think I think about this here for a second, but gotta make sure I put the uh, gear and fiber spacer bushing in there when I put it together and then after that's all done then I can move on to putting all the shifting rail and fork and everything back together um, for good and then I think that'll all be ready for we can finally move on to the belt pulley assembly finally Seems like I've been waiting to do that forever. So, um, I'll check back here in a little bit. 
Okay, got a little assembly lube on the thrust of the end of that shaft. I put a little bit of oil on the bearings. I got a little bit of Permatex ready to go there. So let's put this all together. Okay, I got the slider gear on the shaft. I got the spacer uh, bushing in the back there. And bearing started. I'm just going to tap it into place now. There, it's all on. Got just a tiny little bit of ooze out like I like to see. All the threads or all the bolts are sealed up. And all the bolts are torqued down to about 25 pounds. So that assembly is good to go. Shaft still turns smoothly. So after lunch here, I can start to put the shift rail assembly back together. Be the next thing. So I'll Catch you after lunch. Okay, belly is full. Let's put the shift rail assembly back together. I'm going to take the shaft, slide it in from the rear to about here, get the fork positioned in there, bring it rest of the way forward, tighten up the jack screw and lock nut into that dimple, and then making sure that these are positioned up and then once that is in, then I'll put all the spring and check ball and nut assembly in through the top. And that's a pain in the butt, but it is doable. I tried that in the previous video to make sure it worked. So let's put it all together here now. I'll lube it all up with a little bit of oil so everything is, is coated and won't rust and should slide smoothly. And... That should just about wrap up this whole entire assembly then. Exciting. Okay, shifting rail is in, shifting fork is on, the rail and the jack bolt and lock nut are all tightened up. So now it's the fun part of putting all uh, this assembly in through the top and hopefully not drop anything to the bottom of the transmission. <laughs> Cross your fingers. There, I got it in there. That really wasn't too bad at all. Ended up just using a uh, magnet and a stick, put the ball on there, put it down in there, and then with, used a screwdriver to poke it off the end of the magnet, and then did the same thing with the spring, dropped it in there, poked it off the magnet, and then you can reach in here with a little hand, Got that uh, other thing started, screwed it in there by hand, and then uh, you can put on a uh, universal with an extension uh, little, little socket to fine tune how tight you want that spring on the detent ball. And then when you got where you wanted a bigger socket to lock down the, the lock nut and it seemed to be pretty good it's hard to know at this point until i get the rest of the tractor together um how stiff i should adjust it you know because there's the other arms and linkages you know it's hard to know just based on moving it by hand but it's it's, it's definitely got a detent so i can for now, I'm happy with how that is, and I can always go back through the top and adjust that if I want more or less pressure on that detent spring and ball. So, for now, we're gonna call that good. Put the top cover, top cover back on, and move on to the next thing. Yeah, we made some pretty good progress today. I got the uh, belt pulley housing pretty well cleaned up. I have to give it one more final cleaning before I actually put it on, but it's it's 99% done. Um, I got the the drive, um, which goes in here like this, and then the belt pulley itself mounts to that, and then this is the square shaft that runs off the main pulley of the transmission that drives the belt pulley, square shaft. A little bit of play in that, but. I guess that'll be okay. Just a belt pulley. 
Uh, so that's all cleaned up. I got the grease cup all cleaned up inside and out, both parts. So that's all ready to go. Um, so I think the goal for hopefully come out again tomorrow. The goal for tomorrow will be to get the belt pulley itself cleaned up the rest of the way. It's going to be kind of a pain. I have to get the drill with the wire brush and be creative, clean up inside of there. Uh, get that rest of the way cleaned up. A little bit on that side yet. And then the whole belt pulley assembly will be ready to go. I won't be able to put that back on for good until I get paint and primer. Because I'm going to want to paint the inside of the belt pulley at the very least. Um, before it's all put on. Because otherwise, you know, this gets covered up. So it would be impossible to paint inside uh, once it's all assembled. Oh, I suppose we could talk briefly about, so the grease cup goes in the end here, of course. So you turn in the, the cup to pump the grease in, goes through that pipe, it goes in that channel of the babbit that the belt pulley shaft is turning in. So it's lubing your, your babbit there. It's also oozing out and and lubing this flange where it's riding on there. Um, and then it works its way. Also, you know, some can work its way in here, but that's okay because that's sealed off. So potentially this could be all a bunch of grease in there, but that's okay because there's that seal there. So it can't work its way into the transmission. And it's sealed off here, so it can't work its way out from here. Um, so it can work its way all the way down to this end. And then any excess just works, kind of collects in this oh, little groove, I guess you call it. And I suppose if you really have way, way too much excess, it'll work its way out, out, and fling out the belt pulley. But there's also that that hole that goes connects the bottom there that connects up to that shaft and goes through all the way through here so any excess can can work its way back and forth that way is what I assume that is for um, so as long as you're you're, you know, maintaining and, and keeping a little bit of grease in that babbit. Um, it should stay well lubed. Because anytime the clutch is engaged and the engine is running, that belt pulley is turning because that's on the main shaft. Uh, so even if the transmission is in neutral, the tractor won't be moving, but the belt pulley still will as long as your clutch is engaged. So it's important to keep that lubed. It actually says in the manual to remove the belt pulley assembly if you're not planning to use it to uh, prevent undue wear. But, you know, that isn't going to happen. It's going to get put on. It's going to stay. It's going to remain on the tractor. Um, so, yeah, some pretty good progress today. I will... Uh, Check back hopefully tomorrow with you guys and uh, keep you updated on what I get done. Like I said, hopefully the goal is to get the whole belt bully assembly uh, done and together, at least dry fit it all together. I also got to clean up the related hardware yet, all the bolts to mount it and the bolts to mount the flange on here. So it'll be a little, little monkey business to get it all cleaned up, but eh, I should be able to get it done tomorrow. Well, check back. Have a good night. So I got the belt pulley assembly pretty well cleaned up here. Um, discovered a couple of little issues. Uh, some I know how to fix, some I'm still thinking about here. So I'll show you what I got going on. So we're looking at the belt pulley on its side here, right? 
Uh, this is the housing that will be fixed to the transmission and then the belt pulley and this spin inside of there, right? This keeps the belt pulley locked onto the center part. Okay, so you, you, know, you put this in here, you got two bolts that bolt it on there, and then there's actually a locating uh, drive dowel that keeps, that's what your rotational force is actually up against, right? Because your bolts are only to keep it tight in there that way. There's no real directional force on them. Um, so that dowel pin is completely wore out um, in the housing here. It's You can just see that that hole is all kinds of worn. And it actually actually has uh, a surface crack. Yeah, if the camera will pick that up there on both both uh, inside and outside, just just the depth of that uh, doll. So it's not very deep, but that concerns me a little bit there. Um, There, it focused. So what I think I will do to solve that problem is drill and ream this one out to the next size bigger to take up the slop there. And then I think I'll add a second dowel on this side to uh, strengthen it a little bit more since that one is cracked. It might not be an issue because obviously it's an old crack, but I don't see any reason why a second dowel would hurt anything uh, that should strengthen things up there. So I think that would solve that issue. Um, going back to this housing on the pulley here. This babbit seems to be in pretty decent condition. There's a little bit of play there, but for a belt pulley, uh, I think that's probably acceptable. And as far as play this way, there again, it's I'd say that's acceptable amount of slop there. So I'm not too worried about that. I think the babbit is okay there. There is this crack in the babbit, and if you notice that, um, but it only goes to where that grease channel is, so I'm not concerned about that either. Um, so I think, like I said, I got a solution figured out as far as this goes, but I'll have to sleep on it here and make sure that's what I want to do. But I think that's fixable. There is also minor cracks on these corners here. In this piece, they're again just, they go down just a little bit, just surface cracks. They don't, they don't go all the way down or nothing. Uh, there again, they're old, old cracks. So I'm not too terribly concerned about that, but there again, I'll think about that if I want to do anything else to address that. There's always these little things, you little, little hiccups along the way. Uh, then the next minor hiccup is these are the bolts to mount this housing to the transmission housing. And I cleaned one up here. They're in, oh, the camera doesn't quite do it justice, but they're in pretty poor shape. The ends that are actually threading into the transmission rear plate there are 
pretty well stripped out. There ain't a lot of teeth left on them. I ran a uh, dye over this one just to see how they cleaned up. Like I said, the camera it makes it look all right, but in real life, they're pretty bad. So I'll probably have to try to find some. Uh, I'm gonna probably end up having to splurge and buy some to make it keep it correct because these are the thick-headed hex nuts. And yeah, I could put just a regular old modern three ace bolt in there, and it would work just fine. But for visual uh originality i'll probably order up some some original style thick-headed bolts uh, you can still get them well, i'll have to confirm that i can get this size and everything but most sizes you can get through the restoration restoration supply company uh, online um, they're expensive but you can still get them so i'll have to look into that and like I said, a little bit more final cleaning on this and it can pretty much go together. Oh, one more thing, one other issue. And I guess there is one more problem, slight problem. So this drives on here, right? And I think I mentioned earlier that there's a little bit of slop in this. And there again, it's not terrible, but it's more than I would like to see. So what I think I might try to do is take some shim stock and cut some some shims to put in there to take up that slop. And then what I might do is make that in such a way that the ends fold over this side here so it can't can't walk in because there's a step on the square shaft here, right? And it, then it can't come out because there would be that lip bent on the shim. Um, I could actually put a lip on both sides too if I wanted to. Um, so that's what I'm thinking I'll try there. Uh, I got, don't, don't really have much to lose. I can see if I like the solution or not. And, and uh, go from there but I'd like to see that tightened up a little bit because like I said every time it's engine is running that belt pulley is is running around and there again the more of these rattles and, and loose tolerances we can eliminate the quieter the machine will run um, so I think it'll be worth the effort to, to try try to tighten up those tolerances just a little bit but uh, other than that, it's pretty well ready to go. So we're getting really close to being able to uh, be ready for primer on this assembly. I still have to clean up the, finish cleaning up the steering gear. And I'll probably, uh, this is the, oh, it's called a drawbar mount. It mounts underneath the, the transmission differential uh, as far as I know that is not or possibly not factory original because there's nothing in the parts book that covers that and I haven't seen any other tractors with this particular hitch setup but that doesn't necessarily rule out I I'm guessing it was an add-on for a specific implement that they had mounted on this tractor at some point but uh, I'll probably put it back on just just because if nothing else it'll be a good place to uh, say chain down the tractor when you're transporting it on a trailer um, good good chaining chaining location and it it you know if it is original that's just all the more reason to keep it it's definitely old um, you can almost see where it's it was I think it was actually like hand forged where they uh, forged out these holes as opposed to drilling them out because you can see it actually gets wider by each hole where they you know they driven the punch through blacksmith in it and it actually expanded it out a little bit I believe so I'll probably clean that up and, and put it back on and, uh, 
you can always take it off if you don't want it on there for whatever reason down the road. Um, but uh, so yeah, that goes underneath. That goes underneath. It mounts to there's the two bosses there, and then it bolted to these holes under here. So there again, if nothing else, if for no other reason, it would be good to put that back on there to have something for this to set on, depending on what I do to um, paint it. You know, I could I could rest it on that if I say if I have it on a, a table like this in the paint booth. I haven't decided if I'll actually put it on the engine stand to paint it or not. Um, part of me is a little bit leery to hang all this weight on this engine stand. I mean, it's supposedly rated as a 2,500 pound engine stand, but you start, oh, excuse me, it's a 2,000 pound capacity engine stand, but you start looking at how it's constructed and, you know, it is made in China after all. That's a lot of weight to be dangling off of that one, you know, hopefully good weld, but I don't know, we'll see. And then the other thought I had was, even if I did hang it on the engine stand for painting, I could always put a another added support across and like a pipe up to that flange just to support this this outer end, just so it isn't sitting there, you know, bouncing. I don't know. We'll figure that out. Just thoughts that are going across my mind. If you're wondering, you know, what what my thought process is. Um, but yeah, I think I'll, I'll wrap this video up here for the week. Uh, if you like what you see, you know, hit the old subscribe button and you'll get reminders when I get new videos that come out. Tell your friends, share, like, all that kind of fun stuff. I hate to be one of these YouTuber guys that, you know, says that in every video and I try not to, but yeah, this time I will. Uh, thanks for watching everybody. Catch you later.